Greetings, friends. We find our three scripture readings from the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 17. Learn to do good, seek justice, rescue the oppressed, defend the orphan, plead for the widow. And we find the following one from John 8, verse 32. And you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. The third reading comes from the New Testament the letter of Paul to the Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 25. So then, putting away falsehood, let us all speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. We continue with the freedom from fear, Methodist Against Gender-Based Violence campaign as launched by the presiding bishop two Sundays ago. The sub-theme of the connection is Silent is Consent. I have therefore chosen to title this my message today as Silence is Consent, Speaking is Golden. Silence, like solitude, is a noble discipline and virtue only when we want to give space to God to be God and for God to be in authority. Only when we want to listen to God and serve God. Only then do we hear the words, be still, be silent and know that I am God. However, silence in the midst of injustice and pain is not golden. Silence and neutrality in the midst of the brutality that women face is consent. To consent means that we agree and we allow violence to happen. Not only that, we give permission, we approve, and we allow violence to continue. We cannot afford to look the other way. The concept of consent in the midst of the scandal and tragedy of gender-based violence and femicide is too soft. We should precisely, we should be precise and say that silence is criminal. Silence is sinful and is evil. It is the most horrendous and despicable act we can think of. Whereas the perpetrators of gender-based violence are guilty of the sin of omission because they stand accused of committing and doing something wrong. The silent are also guilty of the sin of omission. They fail to do good when good is absolutely necessary. Part of our challenge with silence comes from our history as a country. You see, we are a society that frowns seriously against snitching. We have a historical stigma on those who sell out, those we used to call mpimpis. This is because people used to be killed after being reported on. We also have a false notion that it is not our business. We look at gender-based violence as a private family, family matter that we should not be entering. Our attitude is that of mind your own business. We also have false sense of self-preservation, of church unity, of church decorum and reputation. We wish to bury our head in the sand. That culture is more public relations than ministry and missionary. It forgets that the emblem of the church is a scandalous cross that is the mark of suffering. The church of God, who in Christ is crucified every time a woman is abused, cannot engage in this false self-preservation. We are called to be vulnerable for the sake of justice. The opposite of silence in this case 
is to speak out. Speaking out is a noble spiritual discipline and virtue. The act of speaking out is part of the prophetic tradition that is evidenced both in the Bible and in the struggles of the oppressed, of the oppressed and the exploited the world over. It is the business of God's prophets to speak against injustice. Biblical prophets are those who were called the voice of the voiceless. But today, the oppressed and abused women have a voice. All that we can be is to be amplifiers of their voice. Those who are God's prophets are those who speak. Prophets speak out. Prophets speak up. Prophets speak against and they speak for. Prophets are those who speak on behalf of God. The prophetic formula and tagline of those who speak on behalf of God in the Bible is, thus says the Lord. We worship the God who speaks. God speaks in the historic tradition of Moses, of the judges and others who came before. What is being shared is not just an empty word. This means that we speak not out of choice. What was being spoken in the Bible is divine authority. This is the divine mandate and imperative. It seeks the attention and is worth being listened to and obeying. We who are followers of Christ are instruments on behalf of God. We are not just ignorant an innocent object. This is more so for those of us who have been aside for the word. Whether it is the ministry of word and sacrament or the ministry of word and service, those of us who preach use the word to heal and to restore. We identify, we endorse, and we believe what we say. God's message is our message. Unlike spokespersons of politicians who are always stressed to speak, to spin, and say what they do not believe, we speak out of conviction. Remember the record label, his master's voice. We are our master's voice. What we speak is the gospel that we believe in. It is the good news. Good news that bring healing and transformation. Good news that bring repentance and salvation to those who are perpetrators. Through our message, we are able to say, he speaks and listening to his words, new life the dead receives. We echo and we speak in the power of the Holy Spirit. Speaking out in the prophetic tradition is not just a self-justifying, guilt-soothing, and ego-boosting exercise. It is not done for popularity ratings. We do not speak in order to be politically correct. True biblical prophets weave their words into prophetic action. The modern prophetic tradition has a continuum we call the Sea Judge Act. First, prophets are those who see. They are continually observant. They have sharp, searching eyes that are able to spot the evil of gender-based violence and femicide. They have sharp hearing of the cries of the abused women and children. They hear through their empathetic and compassionate hearts. Secondly, prophets are those who are able to judge. They do critical inquiry and social analysis of the scourge and the evil they are dealing with, like gender-based violence. They inquire and establish why things are happening. They want to know what is the root cause of the social ill of patriarchy, misogyny, and sexism. They avoid dealing with symptoms and avoid papering over the cracks. Thirdly, Prophets are those who act. 
They go beyond desktop analysis. They are always on the ground and they are involved in order to change the material conditions of those who are abused. We too are called to participate. We are called to engage in the ministry and mission initiatives. The prophet Isaiah provides us with a guide on what the kind of action prophets are to undertake. Firstly, Isaiah says, learn to do good. Our involvement in gender-based violence is not just about speaking and posting on social media and ending there. We are to be involved in and through programs that do good, good that benefit those who are victims and those who are survivors of gender-based violence. Isaiah goes on to say, we must seek justice. We are further to engage in programs that seek to achieve justice for those who are victims. But Isaiah also says we must rescue the oppressed. Part of our ministry is to be involved in programs to rescue those who are abused and are exploited. We need to participate in these programs that provide shelter and security for the victims and survivors. And Isaiah says we must defend and plead. We are more than anything called to also be involved in prevention, in prevention programs. Our two New Testament scriptures identify truth as what prophets must engage in. The Gospel of John counsels us, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free or will set you free. We are called to be custodians of the scarce commodity called truth-telling. We cannot afford to be engaged in the business of cover-ups. We cannot be a church that is seen to be sweeping stuff under the carpet. St. Paul, on the other hand, writes to the Ephesian church and advises them. So then, putting away falsehood, let us all speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. We are to direct our truth to our neighbors. We must first speak to those in our circles before we can go out into the world and speak and minister and preach and correct and rehabilitate those who are outside. John points out that the benefit of truth-telling is freedom. Telling truth, he tells us, will set you free. Let us always, therefore, remember in the context of crime, in the context of the crime and the scene of abuse, of gender-based violence and femicide, silent is consent and speaking is golden. Come, let us pray. Amadolo kwele lilizwe maka gobe pambe kwako. Zite ziti zongi lui zulko lutumolo wako. Laula laula nkosi yesu kwa zangawa umnuaba. Gis piti piti zetu yonakele mislaba. Bona izwe lako wetu kolele zono zalo. Unga tombi ngumbo yako uze lufu sapolano. Ya lankosi singateli imfundiso zezu lako. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In ages past, our hope for the years to come, our shelter from a dark stormy blast, you are our eternal home. O oh Lord, we come before you this morning. We thank you, we praise you, we lift up our voices, our hearts, we glorify in your holy name. We come and say, indeed, you are a wonderful God.
for you have been with us in the past. As you are God of our forbearance, you have led us to this moment and it is our solemn prayer, our trust and belief that after everything has been said and done, even after our own ways have come to an end, you will remain the same God who was, who is, and who shall be. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you for being able to claim you as our God. Even though we know at times we do not live up to the expectation, we miss the mark. But you remain a God who is unfailing, who is faithful, and who has been faithful, who continues to guide and lead, and protect and keep us up to this moment. We come before you, O oh Lord, in confession of our sins, for we have been so silent at times when we were, we were supposed to say something, but due to our weakness and silence, our women and children have been robbed of their lives. At times, O oh Lord, we have said a lot of things and failed to keep quiet. Having said a lot of things, we fail to listen to the cries and the groans of those who needed help and assistance and deliverance. And at times, O oh Lord, we have ignored the cries, even though we heard them screaming. We turned our eyes and our heads towards another directions and pretended as if nothing is happening. At times, O oh Lord, we have been so silent when bluntly people were abusive and violent against our women and children. And so we come before you with shame. We come before you confessing our sin and our inability to deal with what is wrong. We come before you, O oh Lord, not only confessing in shame, looking down to say you are truly sorry that when we were supposed to open our mouths and say something, we kept quiet. That when we were supposed to keep quiet, we continued talking. That when we were supposed to look and see what was happening, we turned our heads towards another direction, as if nothing is happening. Forgive us, O oh Lord. Have mercy upon us. And so as we come before you this morning, we pray that we renew our commitment unto you. Give us courage. Give us wisdom. So that we may begin to open our mouths and do that which needs to be done. So that we may stop violence against women and children, and all those who are vulnerable. Lord, give us courage to be truthful in word and in deed. Give us courage to confront that which is unjust and wrong. Give us courage, O oh Lord, to speak against violence. Give us courage, O oh Lord, not only to speak, but to act against, against violence. We pray that you give us truthfulness 
to deal with matters that are unjust against women and children, irrespective of who does them, irrespective of who that person is, the status of that person, and the social standing of that person. We pray that, O oh Lord, help us to deal with those so that your people may heal. Come, Holy Spirit, inspire us that we may do and say that which, that which pleases before you. Help us to walk humble before you, O oh Lord. Help us to love mercy and to do that which is just. As we commence the service this morning, we pray for your servant, Reverend Sidwell Mukhotu, whom we have put a word into his mouth. Inspire that which he's going to say. Enlighten his mind. Grace his words through your mercy and the power of your Holy Spirit. That which, that O oh Lord, that which is going to say may be accepted in our hearts, may challenge us so that we may do things differently, that it may inspire us to be courageous to do that which is just, that it may inspire and challenge us, O oh Lord, to continue to confront every act and word of violence against women and children. We pray for your church and we pray for those who have been abused and those who have been acted violently by the church, within the church, by those who are leaders. And we pray for those, O oh Lord, who have decided to walk away from the church because the church has abused them. We pray for everyone of suffering. We pray for your hand of healing. We pray for your hand of counsel. We pray for your hand of comfort. We pray for your hand of resolve that you may be with each and every person who is in a vulnerable situation. That you will be with each and every woman who is in a vulnerable situation at this time. Grant us faith to walk with you, to love mercy, and to do justice. We pray these, knowing that you have already heard our prayers, for you know the depths of our hearts. Grant us your grace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive them those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, thy power and the glory ever and ever. Amen. Lord God, have mercy upon us. 